Well, once again, I want to express my appreciation to the congregation here and to the elders for inviting me to come and present these lessons and hope these lessons have, will be beneficial to you. Uh, appreciate the opportunity to come and spend time with everyone and uh, get to uh, remember familiar faces and relationships and uh, be able to uh, talk to each other once again and enjoy uh, the visits and uh, certainly wish the best for this congregation and uh, for the members here as you work in the Lord's kingdom in this community and I uh, hope that you will continue to stand for the truth and uh, shine the light of the gospel as you have been and uh, the Lord will bless your efforts for that. Tonight we want to turn our attention to a study of God's word and tonight we're going to be talking about facing Goliath and if you want to you can open your Bibles to 1 Samuel chapter 17. Most of us are familiar with the story of David and Goliath. As God's people, we face many Goliaths today. Uh, this can be done from an individual standpoint. Uh, as Christians, we face struggles and difficulties in our lives. Maybe it's from illnesses or afflictions that we go through uh, as we talk about advancing in age and all the things that creep along with that. Uh, that can be a Goliath sometimes uh, to think about some of the health issues that people have and the fact that they still make the effort to come out and to worship. Uh, it's very commendable that they do those things. And obviously we face temptation and we face sins and these can be a Goliath for us as well. And so we're familiar with it individually, but we also can be familiar with it collectively. As God's people, as a church, uh, we face issues in society that appear to be huge and overwhelming and things that we cannot possibly stand against and be successful and win. Uh, we think about the evolution issue that has faced us for many years now, the abortion issue that's faced our country for uh, many years now, the sexual immorality, and that has been rampant for a long time. Uh, today, we see an extreme side of that where people are talking about uh, being capable of being a different gender than what they are. But it really goes back for many years. Uh, I remember when I was younger, uh, the issue was people being able to get an easy no-fault divorce. People would just divorce and remarry and uh, live in adultery. And that's been rampant in our society for a long time. And now all these children have been brought up in that. And there's no wonder that they are where they are today because of what they have seen and what they have witnessed as far as the change of adults uh, in their lives. And so that's a Goliath issue uh, to think about teaching the truth today. Uh, is the church going to be able to teach the truth and reach people? Reach people with good and honest hearts who are going to want to accept the gospel. And so for these reasons, I wanted us to think about David and Goliath. Uh, David and Goliath is not a fairy tale story that uh, we read about Cinderella one night. We read uh, about uh, some other story another night, and then another night we read about David facing Goliath. There was a real David and there was a real Goliath. And so this is a story that has been preserved uh, uh, for us in the Word of God. And there's a reason for this uh, to help us understand the history of God's people, but also to, to teach us to be strong, to teach us to be courageous. And I hope this lesson will do that. I hope this lesson will encourage us to face the Goliaths that are in our lives, whether we're dealing with them as an individual or whether we deal with them collectively as God's people. And I hope from our study tonight that we will look and see that a little shepherd boy with God on his side could defeat this champion giant with the best armor that he could possibly have. 
and give us the courage to know that we can be successful and we can be victorious as well. So we'll start our lesson tonight talking about Goliath. Seemingly, he was an invincible enemy. Uh, it seems as if there was no one who would be able to stand against him. In 1 Samuel chapter 17, verses 4 through 7, we read, And a champion went out from the camp of the Philistines named Goliath from Gath, whose height was six cubits and a span. He had a bronze helmet on his head, and his, he was armed with a coat of mail, and the weight of that coat was 5,000 shekels of bronze. And he had bronze armor on his legs and a bronze javelin between his shoulders. Now the staff of his spear was like the weaver's beam, and his iron spearhead weighed 600 shekels, and a shield bearer went before him. This is how Goliath is introduced in this story. This is his physical description. Some of the things that stand out to us is the fact that he is a champion. That champion talks about someone who's a victor, somebody who is won. And here Goliath is, as an individual, challenging any individual in the army of Israel to come out and face him in battle. Do you know what his record was? You know, sometimes we talk about boxers being 32 and 2 or 32 and 5. He was undefeated. I mean, if he had been defeated before, he would be dead. He had gone out and battled and never been put down. Uh, he was very successful what, at what he did, and the Philistine army was confident in him. He was indeed a champion among his people. We see that he was six cubits and a span, and I know that there's some question about this concerning uh, historians and authorities, but basically six cubits and a span would be about nine feet tall. To give us some perspective on that, Shaquille O'Neal was seven foot one inch. So Goliath would be almost two feet taller than Shaquille O'Neal. He's huge. Uh, this man is a big man. And I've seen some big people in the NBA, and a lot of times they get to a point they're so big, they're clumsy. They're awkward in how they run down the court, and they basically have no moves, and they stand under the gold and get rebounds, and that's all they can do. This man was huge, and he was capable of being a champion. He could use his size, he could use his weight, and he could use his abilities to be the best soldier that he could be. It's impressive to think about who he was as an individual. We look at verse 5 and we see that concerning uh, his armor, that his armor weighed 5,000 shekels. That's 150 pounds. Now imagine picking up Somebody here tonight, 150 pounds, and walking out of the building with them. I'm not going to call any names uh, who might be 150 pounds. Uh, I may get it wrong. But that would be hard. I wouldn't want to do it. Carry somebody that's 150 pounds. And that was his armor. He had that on him, and he was still capable of fighting with that much weight. I read one estimate just about his bronze helmet, that that helmet probably weighed 30 pounds. He carried 30 pounds on his head. And so this man was, was very strong. And then the last thing I want us to notice there in verse 7 about his physical appearance is the fact that the head of his spear weighs 600 shekels. Well, that's about 20 pounds. Now, if you get hit with a spear and the head of that spear weighs 20 pounds, you're going to be crushed. It's going to, be, uh, it's going to do damage. And think about 20 pounds to give you some perspective on that. Mo most bowling balls weigh 15 pounds. Now you go out and you get you a stick, and you put a bowling ball on the end of that, and then you use it as a spear. And tell me how easy that is. This man had a spear with the weight of a bowling ball on one end, and he could use that as a champion military person. Physically, Goliath seemed to be invincible. He seemed like he was incapable of being defeated. As we go on in the text there and think about his invincibility, 
We see uh, in 1 Samuel 17, uh, in verse uh, 7 and 8, Then he stood and cried out to the armies of Israel and said to them, Why have you come out to line up for battle? Am I not a Philistine, and you the servants of Saul? Choose a man for yourselves and let him come down to me. He thought it was just pathetic that they would even be there to fight him, that they would line up against the Philistines, how capable he was in being a soldier. In verse 9, it says, If he is able to fight me and kill me, then we will be your servants. But if I prevail against him and kill him, then you shall be our servants and serve us. And the Philistine said, I defy the armies of Israel this day. Give me a man that we may fight together. Verse 11 tells us, When Saul and all Israel heard these words of the Philistine, they were dismayed and greatly afraid. I would be dismayed and greatly afraid too, thinking about this huge individual and and going out and fighting against him. But he defied them. He defied the armies of King Saul. Now later on, when David talks about this army, David's going to talk about this army as being the army of the living God, the army of the God of hosts. And so for David, he had a different perspective. But Goliath didn't consider God. Goliath looked at them and he thought about their king. And so he knew he could defeat them. And we think about this challenge, this is something that was constantly before them. In verse 16 it says, And the Philistine drew near and presented himself forty days, morning and evening. Forty days, over a month and a half, twice a day, they would be sitting, looking across and seeing this huge individual come down and they know what he's going to say. Send somebody out here. Send somebody to fight me. I'm going to defeat him, and you're going to serve us. We are, are going to conquer you. And the people were afraid to hear uh, Goliath make this challenge to them. We can be like that today when we think about those things that challenge God's people. Because there's plenty of individuals that have disrespect for God. And they have disrespect for Christ. They have no regard for the Bible being the product of God and, and not some product of man. They look at sacred things like the church and the church is an embarrassment to them. They have no regard for the church and uh, no regard for uh, God's people that make up the church. And so we hear people just like Goliath. They ridicule and look down upon God and look down upon his people we hear that challenge constantly. And we may think, you know, everybody is jumping on the bandwagon. Everybody is jumping on science and, and praising science and they must be right. Uh, evolution must be true. And everybody is thinking about, you know, especially now, June is Gay Pride Month and you can't go anywhere without somebody promoting that and, and talking about how wonderful it is to have gay pride and we support gay pride. And, you know, it, it's, it's just a shame. You're starting even to hear that in some denominations. Some individuals that call themselves pastors are getting up and promoting and defending homosexuality. And we hear this, these challenges and we think, you know, what are we going to do? Are we going to be able to face this? Are we going to be able to how success against these things. Well, as we look at the story of David and Goliath, I think we all are familiar with this story and we know the end, what happens to Goliath. He gets killed. And so as we think about Goliath, Goliath was not an invincible enemy of God's people. Goliath fell. And for a few moments, I want us to consider some things that caused Goliath to fall and these same things will cause the enemies of God to fall today. One of the things that caused Goliath to fall is that he was an arrogant individual. In 1 Samuel chapter 17 and verse 10 it says, And the Philistines said, I defy the armies of Israel this day. Give me a man that we may fight together. We think about Goliath. He ignored who Israel was. You know, if you remember when the spies went into uh, the Jericho, 
Rahab remembered these are the people that their God brought them out of Egypt. These are the people that destroyed the Egyptians. That was 40 years after that event had taken place, more than 40 years. And she still had a respect for God's people and what they were capable of doing. Here's Goliath, and he ignored who these people are. He ignored what their God was capable of doing, and he defied them. And so we see Goliath was someone that is full of arrogance. In Proverbs 16 and verse 18, the proverb writer tells us that pride goes before destruction and a haughty spirit before a fall. Pride leads to destruction. And there are people today who are flaunting their disregard for God. They are flaunting their disregard for His Word, the Bible. And they are doing things that are immoral and sinful. And we may think, well, these people are going unpunished. There's nothing that we can do to stop them. But we need to realize their arrogance will bring them down. Their arrogance is it's going to cause them to be destroyed. Now, it may not happen uh, in our lifetimes or in their lifetimes. But there is a day that they will stand before God. And I guarantee you they won't be defying him. They won't be saying, I don't believe in you anymore, and I don't believe in your word. There will be a day when that pride brings them to destruction. Jeremiah 9 and verse 23, thus says the Lord, Let not the wise man glory in his wisdom, let not the mighty man glory in his might, nor let the rich man glory in his riches. Things that people look to and uphold and they're confident in like wisdom and oh you just follow the science the science tells us about all these things look at how the world the physical world is worship how we think we have control over the world and if we could just change all the automobiles over to electric we will save the environment that's been going on from the 70s and in the 70s, we were fighting a global cooling because the world was going to go into an ice age. Did that happen? No, we didn't go into an ice age. And so we didn't go into an ice age. They just flipped the switch, and now we're going to be overheated. We're going to burn up. Well, that's not going to happen. And it's not going to happen because we do not have control over this ordered world. God is in control, and we need to acknowledge Him. And if we acknowledge Him... We're going to be faithful stewards of the things that God has put into our hands. And so when we think about people who lean on their wisdom and lean on what they think their understanding is or the money that they have, the riches that they have, and they use that as their power and their influence, those individuals will eventually be destroyed because of their arrogancy. Goliath was. But Goliath was also not an invincible enemy because he had contempt for God. In 1 Samuel chapter 17 and in verse 43, this is later on in the story when David is actually coming before Goliath. Goliath sees David and the Philistine said to David, am I a dog that you come to me with sticks? And the Philistine cursed David by his gods. Can you imagine this man, this champion, and he finally sees the one that's coming to meet him and challenge him. And it's a little shepherd boy. And he has his shepherd's staff. And he has a little sling. Are you kidding me? I've waited all this time and this is your best. This is what you're sending out. This is pathetic. And he is cursing David. How dare you? How dare you think you can defeat me? And he's calling his gods to curse David because he just has disdain for him. Goliath had contempt for God. And this is what led him to be defeated. When we look at those who have contempt for God, in Psalm 2, the psalmist talks about this in verses 2 through 4. We read, The kings of the earth set themselves and the rulers take counsel together against the Lord and against his anointed, saying, Let us break their bonds in pieces and cast away their cords from us. We look at those who set themselves against God, and what do they say? Oh, we'll just join forces and we will defeat them, we'll break them into pieces, and, 
And we think about those people throughout history who have tried to do that, to have shown contempt for God and the things that belong to him. In verse 4 we read, He who sits in the heavens shall laugh, the Lord shall hold them in derision. When God got ready to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah, how easy was that? When he was ready to destroy the Babylonians, how easy was it for him to do that? When people have contempt for God and they have no respect for him, how easy is it for God just to destroy them? It's nothing to him. He can bring those things to an end. And I think we're starting to see people with contempt toward God. Imagine conversations we hear today. We read the scriptures, in the beginning God created them man and woman, male and female. And then today we hear people with degrees, people who have education, and they can tell us that a person with X and Y chromosomes that doesn't have ovaries and doesn't have a womb, that this person can be a mother, that this person can have children. Or what are they doing? They're saying, God, you may have made them male and female, but this is our power now. This is what we are going to do. This is what we say. That's contempt toward God. That's showing their ridicule toward him. And just like Goliath, that led to his fall, and that will lead to the fall of people today. But as we go on and we think about Goliath, we also see that he was not an invincible enemy of God, because he trusted in himself. In 1 Samuel 17 and in verse 45, David said to the Philistine, You come to me with a sword, with a spear, and with a javelin. Why did Goliath come to him with those pieces of weapon? Because that was the best the soldier could be equipped with at that day. He came to him with the best. That's what Goliath trusted in. He trusted in those weapons to be a champion. He trusted in those weapons to defeat his enemy. Remember, he had the best. He had a spear with a 20-pound spearhead on it. He was very equipped to be a soldier. And so he had confidence in that. He trusted in those things. But did he defeat David? Did he conquer David? He sure didn't. So he trusted in the wrong things. He was conquered. And so when you trust in yourself, it's going to lead to your defeat. Jeremiah 10 and verse 23 says, O Lord, I know the way of man is not in himself. It is not in man who walks to direct his own footsteps. People who trust in their wisdom and trust in their confidence, trust in their knowledge, trust in their degrees or someone else's degrees in education, Those people are trusting in the wrong thing. We need to be trusting in God. He's the one with the answers, even to the things that we're facing today in our modern society. God's word is still where we need to go for our answers. But also, Goliath was not an invincible enemy because he overlooked the simple things. In 1 Samuel 17, verses 42 and 43, And when the Philistine looked about and saw David, he disdained him, for he was only a youth, ruddy and good-looking. So the Philistine said to David, Am I a dog that you come to me with sticks? And the Philistine cursed David by his gods. Remember, Goliath was nine feet tall. Goliath's armor probably weighed more than David weighed. And Goliath had the best equipment that he could have. He was covered with armor from head to head head to toe and he looked at his enemy he's just a shepherd boy and he's not even an old shepherd boy he's a young boy he is a youth and all he has is a stick and all he has is a sling Goliath was thinking I cannot possibly be defeated by this this will not do it this is not capable of bringing me down but again we know the story don't we that little boy crossed that ravine And he put a stone in his forehead, the only place that wasn't protected. He put a stone there, and he brought Goliath to his knees. The simple things Goliath could not appreciate. The simple things Goliath could not find value in. 
And that's a reason why our Goliaths today will fall as well, because they do not appreciate the simple things. In Psalm 8, verses 1 and 2, and this is the Psalm of David, David says in Psalm 8 and verse 1, O Lord, our Lord, how excellent is your name in all the earth, who have set your glory above the heavens. God's glory is above the heavens. The heavens declare the glory of God. And it's amazing how as our science continues to develop and we have more and more capabilities, that people aren't proving that there is no God. What they're proving is that there is order. There's always been order. They're proving the glories of God in the things that they are creating. If we ever get to Mars, what we're going to find out is that there is a creator. And he is in, God, in heaven and he is God. But he also goes on in verse 2 and David says, Out of the mouth of babes and nursing infants you have ordained strength because of your enemies that you may silence the enemy and the avenger. When God wanted to defeat his enemy, when he wanted to face his enemy, he didn't have to get somebody like Goliath. He didn't have to have a champion. His power was within himself, and so he could use a shepherd boy. He could use fishermen. He could use a tax collector. He could use a simple message, a message that Paul tells us in 1 Corinthians 1 was foolishness to those who are being lost. But in the simple things is where God has put his power. And because of that, the people who are arrogant, they overlook it like Goliath. They have contempt for it. And because they overlook the simple things, things they are defeated but when we look at God we can have confidence in those simple things is because this is how he equips us to face our Goliath well we've talked about enough about Goliath I want us to spend the rest of our lesson looking at the question how will we face Goliath as we have talked about Goliath was not an invincible enemy our Goliath will fall and so, how are we going to respond to Goliath today? And I think when we look at 1 Samuel 17, we see different people and how they responded to Goliath. And so I want us to consider that for the remaining part of our lesson. The first ones that I want us to consider is to think about the soldiers of the armies of the living God of hosts, the soldiers of the army of Saul. Are we going to face Goliath like those men faced? who for 40 days heard him morning and evening defy them, defy God, and challenge them to come out and meet him in battle. Are we going to be like those men? If you remember, we noticed in 1 Samuel 17 that these men were afraid. They had fear. They faced Goliath with fear. It says there in 1 Samuel 17 and verse 11, When Saul and all Israel heard these words of the Philistine, they were dismayed and greatly afraid. As those days came, and they would be up in the morning, and they would be eating breakfast and talking, you probably had some conversation. Is he going to come out today? You think he's going to come out again? I mean, he's been doing this for weeks. Do you think, do you think he's, oh, here he comes. They would see him coming. They would know that he's going to uh, issue that challenge again. Verse 24 tells us that there in 1 Samuel 17, all the men of Israel, when they saw the man, they fled from him and were dreadfully afraid. Imagine the Philistines looking over in their camp. And there goes their champion down there, and they start seeing those men get up and go to their tents. Go hide in their tents and go hide behind their tents. That's what these enemies of God's people were seeing when they looked at these soldiers. They were afraid. They were not going to respond to Goliath. Is that what we're going to do today? Are we going to fear? Are we going to be afraid? What will happen to us if we do this? What will happen to us if we say anything? What will happen to us if we take a stand? Oh, we can't do that. We'll just have to be quiet. We'll just have to say nothing. Do nothing. Let somebody else do it. Are we going to fear like the men of the army feared? Are we going to be like some in the army of Israel when it came to facing Goliath and someone was willing to face him 
they accused him of doing it because he had the wrong motives. This is concerning David and his brother heard that David was thinking about Goliath's challenge. And we read there in 1 Samuel 17 and verse 28. Now Elab, his oldest brother, heard when he spoke to the men and Elab's anger was aroused against David. And he said, why did you come down here? And with whom have you left those few sheep in the wilderness? I know your pride and the insolence of your heart, for you have come down to see the battle. His brother couldn't stand him. And I know how brother relationships go, but this man had been there 40 days hearing this challenge two times a day, and his brother is thinking about accepting this challenge, and all he can do is say, you're doing it for the wrong reason. You, you shouldn't even be here. You have no business being here. You need to go back home. And, you know, he had a poor, pathetic job taking care of just a few sheep. Go back there and take care of those sheep. You just come down here to see the battle, see something exciting. And you're doing this because your heart is not in the right place. You're doing this because you want to make a name for yourself. You're doing this because of your pride. And so here is his brother. When somebody is willing to accept the challenge of Goliath, he's discouraging him. He's accusing him of having the wrong motives. Is that what we do? When Christians want to stand for what's right, Christians have the strength and the courage to face Goliath. Are we there to accuse them of having the wrong motives, of trying to make a name for themselves? Do we criticize and condemn what they do instead of supporting them and upholding their hand? We should not face our Goliath like Elab did, like he did with his brother David. By accusing those who are doing what they can of having the wrong motives, we need to be individuals who are encouraging. But a, another person we can consider as we think about how we face Goliath is King Saul. Are we going to face Goliath like King Saul did? If you remember King Saul... When he was anointed as king, what stood out about his physical appearance? He was head and shoulders above everybody. He's a tall guy. He's big. I mean, as far as a king is concerned, that's who you want. Somebody that you physically and literally have to look up to. So, he's here. He's hearing this champion. He's seeing this tall man who can meet him the best. Well, our tallest person, Saul. Maybe Saul will say, hey, I'm the king. This, this responsibility, ultimately, it falls on me. I'll go out and face this giant. Forty days he didn't. I bet he didn't even come out of his tent. I bet he stayed in there. And the men were wondering, what's King Saul going to do? Well, what we see with Saul is that when he finds out that somebody is finally willing to face Goliath, he discouraged him from doing that. In 1 Samuel 17 and verse 33, Saul said to David, You are not able to go against the Philistine to fight with him, for you are a youth, and he a man of war from his youth. So the best that he can do as the leader of God's people, as the physical tallest person, is to tell the person that's willing to go and fight, You are not capable. You cannot do this. Are we going to be like Saul and discourage people who are willing to stand for the truth today? Who are willing to do what is right? Oh, you can't do that. It's not going to make a difference. I don't care what you do. You can't fight Target. You can't fight Amazon. You can't fight our government. You can't fight the press. All these people are working together to promote these things that we're facing. And you aren't going to be able to do anything about it. Are we going to discourage people? When they try to do what's right and stand for the truth, that's what Saul did. We also think about Saul and the leader that he was. We see that he eventually put his responsibility on other people. In 1 Samuel 17 there, verses 38 and 39, So Saul clothed David with his armor. He put his bronze helmet on his head and also clothed him with a coat of mail. David fastened his sword to his armor and tried to walk, for he had not tested them. And David said to Saul, I cannot walk with these, for I have not tested them. So David took them off. Get that picture in your head. You cannot defeat him here. 
take my armor. You cannot win. You are a youth. He's a, a, a warrior from his youth. Here, take my sword. Take my helmet. It's my responsibility, but you go take care of it. You're going to get defeated, but you go. You cannot put your responsibility on other people. Your responsibility is your responsibility. And other people's responsibility is theirs. You need to take care of what God has placed upon you. You can't be a member of a congregation and have responsibilities and say, well, we have a preacher that does that. Or we have elders that do that. Or we have deacons that do that. And they will take care of these things. No, you have responsibilities. We all have responsibilities to face Goliath and to do what God wants us to do. And so we do not want to face Goliath as King Saul faced uh, him by putting his responsibilities on others. But there's another individual that I want us to consider as we bring our lesson to a close. And that is, will we face our Goliath like David did? Like David faced Goliath. First thing we know about David is that he recognized the challenge. In 1 Samuel 17 and verse 23, we read then as he talked with them, there was the champion, the Philistine of Gath, Goliath by name, coming up from the armies of the Philistines. And he spoke according to the same word, so David heard them. David heard, David recognized that there was a challenge, and we need to be listening to the challenge today. We need to be aware of what we are facing, what our children are facing, and what our grandchildren are going to be facing. We need to be attuned to what is going on. In 1 Samuel 17 and verse 26, Then David spoke to the men who stood by, saying, What shall be done for the man who kills this Philistine and takes away the reproach for Israel? For who is this uncircumcised Philistine that he should defy the armies of the living God? David knew what was at stake. David realized this man is not just challenging me. He's just not challenging these men. He's defying God in heaven. That's why we need to be concerned. That's why he needs to be defeated. It's because his uncircumcised lips are defying our God. And so David knew the challenge that was there. And I know it can get discouraging and it can get depressing thinking about what we face today, thinking about our children growing up in this society and our grandchildren who will be growing up in this society. It gets discouraging thinking about that, but we can't close our ears. We, we cannot hear that challenge. We have to be aware of what's going on like David did and recognize the challenge. We also see that David ignored discouragement. In 1 Samuel 17 and verse 29, David said, what have I done now? Is there not a cause? When his brother accused him of having the wrong mo motives, David responded to that by saying, is there not a cause? You see the Goliath. You see the enemy of God's people. You hear him defying God. Is there not a cause? You can accuse me of having the wrong motives, and you can accuse me of having a mediocre job of taking care of a few sheep, but is there not a cause that needs to be accepted here, that needs to be a fault for? So David just ignored the discouragement. And he went on and he did what he needed to do. And today, that's what we need to do when it comes to facing our Goliaths. Ignore the discouragement. Even some among God's people will discourage us, but don't take that to heart. Realize that there is a cause and stand for the truth. But also, when we think about David, we see that he trusted, his, or he trusted God. In 1 Samuel 17 there, beginning at verse 32, it says, Then David said to Saul, Let no man's heart uh, fail because of him. Your servant will go and fight with this uh, Philistine. And so David told Saul, I'm willing to go and accept his challenge. For 40 days, nobody else was willing to do that, but David was. Why was David willing to go? And fight this man. Well, as we look there in the text in verse 36, David says, Your servant has killed both lion and bear, and this uncircumcised Philistine will be like one of them, seeing he has defied the armies of the living God. 
Moreover, David said, the Lord who delivered me from the paw of the lion and from the paw of the bear, he will deliver me from the hand of this Philistine. And Saul said to David, go and the Lord be with you. Now imagine David here looking at Goliath and he says, I will defeat him because in the past I have fought a lion and a bear and I defeated them. God delivered them into my hand and God will deliver him into my hand. I want you to think about David fighting that lion and that bear as he's out in the wilderness. He can't pick up his cell phone and call his dad, hey, bring the rifle. There's a, there's a lion out here attacking the sheep. I see a bear, bring the rifle, come and help me. He's out there by himself. And he doesn't have a high-powered rifle with a scope on it so that he can see them a great distance off and he can take care of the threat. David talks about the paw of those animals. He's fighting these things up close and personal. He has experience in facing fearful things. He has experience being challenged. And so when it comes to another challenge, he trusts. God has been with me in the past. God is going to be with me now. His past experience helped him face the challenge of Goliath. As we go on there in chapter 17 and notice verse uh, 45 through 47. Then David said to the Philistines, Philistine, you come to me with the sword, with the spear, and with a javelin. But I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the army of Israel, whom you have defiled. This day the Lord will deliver you into my hand, and I will strike you, uh, strike you and take your head from you. And this day I will give the carcasses of the camp of the Philistine to the birds of the air and the wild beasts of the earth, that all the earth may know that there is a God in Israel. Then all this assembly shall know that the Lord does not save with sword and spear, for the battle is the Lord's, and he will give you into our hands. You see the confidence of David. He knew what Goliath was capable of. But he also knew who was on his side. God is with me. He was with me against the lion and the bear. He's going to be with me now. And I'm going to defeat you. I'm going to cut your head off. We are going to defeat the Philistines. Your dead bodies are going to lay on this field and become food for wild animals. And the world is going to know the power of our God. The world is going to know what our God is capable of. That's the confidence David had because he trusted in God. And when you take care of matters in your life as a Christian, when you face the challenges that come before you, it will equip you to handle bigger challenges in the future. We see this in people who become elders. Elders are men who raise, have good homes, they have a good marriage, they raise their children to be faithful servants of God, and that equips them to be able to be spiritual leaders and watch after souls in the church. Because they have fought the lions and the bears in their home, they can face the Goliaths in the congregation. We see that in our lives individually. When we take care of the lions and the bears, it's going to help us to face the Goliaths that we face ourselves. That's a very valuable lesson that we learn, and we learn to trust in God by doing those things. And we need to be like David and trust in God and what he's capable of doing. We will see the victory against God's enemies. And then finally, as we think about David, David looked at facing Goliath and he trusted the abilities that God had given him. In 1 Samuel 17, there in verse 39 and 40, David fastened his sword to his armor and tried to walk for he had not tested them. And David said to Saul, I cannot walk with these, for I have not tested them. So David took them off. He wasn't capable of handling the armor that was made for Saul. Of course he wasn't. He's a young guy. He's a young boy. Saul was head and shoulders above everybody. His armor would have been huge for David to have to use those things. And so he didn't try to do what somebody else was capable of doing. David trusted in what he was able to do. The skills that he had while he was out keeping his father's sheep. 
So David says in verse 40, Then he took his staff in his hand, and he chose for himself five smooth stones from the brook, and he put them in a shepherd's bag, in a pouch which he had, and his sling was in his hand, and he drew near to the Philistine. And if we drop down to verse 49, Then David put his hand in his bag and took out a stone, and he slung it and struck the Philistine in his forehead, so that the stone sank into his forehead, and he fell on his face to the earth. So David prevailed over the Philistine with a sling and a stone, and he struck the Philistine and killed him, but there was no sword in the hand of David. Therefore David ran and stood over the Philistine, took his sword and drew it out of its sheath and killed him, and cut off his head with it. And when the Philistines saw that their champion was dead, they fled. This is a great scene for ending of a movie. To have this invincible enemy be brought to his knees by this little shepherd boy. And one stone. That stone sunk into his forehead, but it didn't kill him. And so Goliath saw everything. As he fell, he saw David walking toward him. But because he was so severely injured, he couldn't do anything about it. And then when David got there, he pulled that sword out of his sheath and he cut that man's head off. That little shepherd boy did that. And he did it with the abilities that he had. The abilities that Goliath disdained. That he had no respect for. That he cried out against and cursed David. David did it with the abilities and the talents that he had that he was capable of abusing. Like David wrote in Psalm 8 and verse 2 that we read earlier, out of the mouth of babes, God is capable of defeating his enemies. And we see that at this very point. When we face our Goliath today, don't fear because you may not have the abilities that somebody else has. You may not be capable of doing what someone else is capable of doing. Trust in the abilities that you know you have. Trust in what you know you can do and do it. God is with you. God is going to help you succeed. God is going to help you stand. And we will see our Goliaths fall as well. I hope this lesson again will encourage us and inspire us to be strong and inspire us to be brave. We do face Challenges that seem to be invincible, but they aren't. God is going to be victorious. His will is going to be uh, wrought. And he is going to accomplish uh, what he intends to accomplish. And we need to have faith in that. And so as we end this lesson, I want us to consider that maybe a Goliath that we're facing tonight is sin in our lives. And we need to do something about that. That's something that can be put to death this very moment by responding to the gospel. If you're somebody that's not a Christian and you want to defeat sin, then obey the gospel. Have faith in God's word. Believe in Jesus Christ as the Son of God and your Savior. Repent of your sins. Confess your faith in the Son of God and be baptized with him in death to have your sins washed away. And you will defeat sin. You will leave here tonight victorious. And that's going to help you be stronger and courageous in things you face in the future. If you're here tonight as a Christian and you have allowed sin to come back into your life, that is the Goliath that you are facing. And you can defeat it this evening as well. You can humble yourselves, realize that there is a cause, and you can repent of those sins. You can confess those faults, and God is faithful and just. He will forgive you of those sins. If we can assist you in responding to the invitation, we encourage you to come forward as we stand and as we sing.